Hello everyone, welcome to Math with Allison. So today we're working in our integration series. We're gonna be talking about how to find the surface area of a solid of revolution. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we have a random function. Look at my little floating worm. And what we're doing is we are revolving this around the x-axis. So if I were to do that, I would get this on the other side. Pretend that's perfectly symmetric. And so what would happen is we would have an opening like this, and then we would have something like this on the other side. So a tiny little circle. Here we have a 3D object, but it's perfectly hollow on the inside. And what we're wanting to find is this surface area. Let's go ahead and pretend that we partition this x axis perfectly, perfectly. This is b, and then we go all the way to a. So here, the distance between all of these little x values is going to be delta x. So they're all going to be perfectly equal. What we're going to go ahead and do is like we're going to go ahead and take a little tiny slice of this between these two x values. Now I'm going to zoom in really close because notice here that these two are different heights. So it's like if we were to take a triangle and we're going to have that little triangle right there and that's going to estimate that length right here. So here we have one length of the triangle is going to be delta x and now we want to go ahead and find the other length. And we can pretend that this right here is x of x k plus 1 and this right here is x sub k. So here our top function is going to be f of x k plus 1. And then this lower little guy right here, which is f of x, k. I'll go ahead and draw this triangle over here so it makes a bit more sense. And we'll call this delta x, k. And so here, what this length is going to be, we're going to call it delta x, delta y sub k. And this is going to be equal to f of x sub k plus 1. And we're going to subtract off f of x sub k. And so here, we're able to find the hypotenuse, which is going to estimate that little length. So here the hypotenuse is going to be equal to the square root of delta x k squared plus delta y sub k squared. So here we found the hypotenuse. I'm going to go ahead and redraw what we have. So we have a little cylinder. Here we were able to estimate the height of the cylinder, which is going to be the hypotenuse, right? And so that's going to represent this length right here, which we found using that little triangle. Now, the question is, how are we going to find the surface area of the cylinder? Pretend that we take the cylinder and we cut it. And then when we flatten it out, it ends up being a rectangle. So I literally cut it in half, and here I end up with a rectangle. So like we said, the height of this is going to be the square root of delta x k squared plus delta y k squared. Now, the question is, what is going to be the entire width of this? Well, the width is determined by our circumference. And so the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So let's go ahead and talk about what the radius is going to be. We're going to be extending from the middle all the way up to our function. And so what we do is since we're estimating what this little length is up here, we're going to take the average between this function and this function because those are at two different lengths. So here we're going to say the radius is equal to f of x sub k plus 1 minus plus f of x sub k divided by 2. We're going to take the average of those two different heights and say it's going to be somewhere in the middle. And that right there is going to be a radius. So in order to find the area, right, the area of this rectangle, we multiply the width times the height. So here we get 2 pi times the radius divided by 2. And we're going to multiply that by the height. So here, this only represents one tiny strip of it, right? And we want to go ahead and find every single one of these strips, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add them all together. So here we're taking the summation. We're starting at k equals 1 going all the way up to n. That just represents the little partitions of the x values. And we're going to add all of these together. Before we do that, notice here that the 2's cancel out. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So here we're adding up all of those strips together in order to get an estimate for the surface area. Because remember, it's not perfect since we're using the triangle, we're using the average, all these different things. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this delta y k squared. I'm going to multiply it by a giant 1. So I'm going to multiply it by delta x of k squared divided by delta x of k squared. So the purpose of me doing that is so I can factor out the delta x sub k squared out of both of these. So when I do that, I get 1 plus, and this becomes delta y sub k squared divided by delta x sub k squared. 
when we have a product inside a square root, we can split up the square root. So what I can do is split this into two square roots. I have the square root of this times the square root of this. But when I take the square root of delta x squared, that cancels with the square root. So here, I'm going to go ahead and move my delta x sub k to the outside. So I'm going to move it over here. Here we have this whole thing still. So notice here, we have something going on. We can actually combine this into one fraction to the power of 2, since they're both to the power of 2. So this whole thing to the power of 2. But what is delta y divided by delta x? That is the derivative of y in terms of x. And so what this just represents is our first derivative. And of course, it's our first derivative squared. So we have f prime of delta x k quantity squared. So now we have some interesting stuff going on. And what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this whole thing, because we're wanting to make those little cylinders smaller and smaller and smaller. That way they become more and more accurate. And this right here is the limit definition of an integral. This is equal to the integral from a to b of pi times, and now remember what we were doing with this. We were taking our two function heights because they were at two different heights, and we were finding the average. But this right here was equal to delta x. So as delta x gets smaller and smaller, these two points are going to converge to the same point. So what this becomes, instead of we're adding those two together, that becomes 2 f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime x quantity squared times dx, right? That delta x becomes dx. And there we just derive the formula for surface area. So let's go ahead and look at the official definition. We have f of x is greater than or equal to 0 with a continuous first derivative on its interval. The area of surface generated when the graph of f uh, on that interval is revolved about the x-axis is what we just developed. So let's go ahead and we're going to do an example of this. We have painting a funnel. So here we have the function described as x cubed divided by 1 over 12x on the interval 1 to 2. So I went ahead and drew it out for us. This is what the 3D surface area would look like. And we're going to go ahead and actually solve for surface area using this formula. So here we have that the surface area is equal to the integral between 1 and 2 of 2 pi times our function. So x cubed plus 1 over 12x. And we're going to multiply by the square root of 1 plus, and let's go ahead and find the first derivative. So here I'm going to rewrite f of x. So that's going to be x cubed plus 1 twelfth x to the power of negative 1. That way I can see power rule really clearly. So here when we find the first derivative, we get 3x squared minus 1 twelfth x to the negative 2. Or if you wanted, you could rewrite that as 3x squared minus 1 over 12x squared. So let's go ahead and replace that inside our formula. Alrighty, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and square that. We can bring out that constant multiple. We have the integral of 1 to 2. And now that whole thing stays in here. And now, good luck to me, we're going to go ahead and square that. So we get 1 plus 9x to the power of 4. That becomes minus 1 fourth, minus 1 fourth, plus 1 over 144x to the power of 4. Okay, so we can combine this. Um, minus 1 fourth and minus 1 fourth becomes minus 1 half. And now we can combine that 1 minus 1 half is equal to positive 1 half. So I'll just make that a plus. Okay, so we have that whole thing. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. And I'm going to rewrite it to show you guys a trick. Um, this is fairly common with like arc length, with um, surface area. What we do is we take our first term. So we have 3x squared to the power of 2. I'm going to split this up into 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. And then this is 1 over 12x squared quantity squared. Because I'm going to show you how we can rewrite that. This becomes 3x squared plus 1 over 12x squared quantity squared. That occurs pretty often with these types of problems. So the purpose of that is that these cancel out, which is very nice. So what you could do is you could multiply this out, or I can show you guys another trick. I'm going to go ahead and use u substitution. I'm going to set u equal to x cubed minus, and I'll rewrite that, 1 over 12x to the negative 1 because I can see its derivative in here. So here when I take the derivative du dx, I get 3x squared, and that becomes plus 1 over 12x squared. Do you, do you see why I did that? 
So here we're going to go ahead and solve for dx, or you can just use straight substitution if you want. I'll go ahead and do that this time. du is equal to 3x squared plus 1 over 12x squared times dx. And I can see that right here. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is change the bound. So I have my bottom bound, or let's do our upper bound, is equal to 2. And here I have u is equal to, and that becomes 2 cubed minus 1 over 12 times 2. That's going to be gross. So here I get 8 minus 1 over 24. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to say that's equal to 7 and 23, 24. So we're going to do a mixed number today. It's one of those kind of days. Here we got x is equal to 1. So u is equal to 1 cubed minus 1 over 12. That is equal to 11 12. So let's go ahead and rewrite our integral. So here we have 2 pi is hanging out, right? But now we have our new lower bound is 11 12 and our new upper bound is 7 and 23 24. So I'm sorry if that causes any of you pain. But here we have that we set this first one equal to u, and we found that that whole thing I highlighted in pink is equal to du. So here, let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. We get 2 pi. That becomes u squared divided by 2, and we're integrating this between our bounds. Here, notice that the 2 and the divided by 2 cancel out, which is very nice. So that pi hangs out, and here we're going to go ahead and plug it in. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. So if you want to simplify it further, you totally can. Otherwise, I think the solution is great. So that's all I have for us today in this video. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.